Hi everybody, it's December 11, 2017. I'm sure you all heard a suicide bomber strikes New York City at rush hour and YouTubers are all on it, man. They're all over the place. And let me tell you, California is still burning up and you know what? We know, we know that all of these, all of these uh, so-called attacks are false flag attacks and I sure wish that Americans would wake up, face reality. You know, if it's not every day or every other day, it's every third day that something major happens. And then when that latest and greatest thing happens, Americans are so glued. Oh my God, uh, a terrorist attack, a suicide bomber, ISIS inspired. He detonated himself. Thank God. Thank God nothing really bad happened. ISIS. Wow. Well, what will be the solution to these crazy Brooklyn men who carry out their plans to cause a terrorist attack? But, oh, law enforcement is right on it. Either they thwart it themselves or, well, in this case, the suicide bomber blew himself up. Are you sick of this? Drudge. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Botched ISIS bomber. Port Authority. Payback for Israel actions. Rush hour stampede. What's headlined? Globe nominations. List big snubs. And you know what? An awful lot of Americans will go to the Globe nominations because they love their famous, their rich and famous, the crazy, psychopathic nut jobs in Hollywood. What else do we have here? Oh, CNN whines Trump a bully tormenting kids. Verizon pays to live stream every uh, NFL game on Yahoo. Yay! Football! Live streamed on Yahoo! Pentagon defies president. Will allow trans to enlist. We have a fire, the Thomas fire, that last night was 15% contained at, what, 143,000 acres burned. We have Americans losing their homes. We have an awful lot of suffering, a lot of wildlife, a lot of horses dying. We have more evacuations, but this morning it was 10% contained and reported it was 233,000 acres burned, nearly doubled, doubled the acreage that was burned in less than 24 hours. And where do we have that news? Oh, oh, wait here, somewhere here. Uh... Let's see. Oh, fire threatening Santa Barbara. That was posted yesterday. The only new post is the blaze is larger than New York City and Boston combined. That is a very big blaze for California. But, well, perhaps to take the attention off of an awful lot of people questioning those fires. Let's get a suicide bomber to blow himself up. That's right. Blew himself up. <sighs> ISIS inspired. All right. I, I can't stand this stuff. And when you have your own government who um, conduct these false flag attacks, when you have your own FBI known, known, hell, the New York Times, the New York Times informed you back in 2012, terrorist plots, plots hatched by the FBI. How is it that Americans just deny reality? Won't acknowledge that the insanity, the violence, the weather events, the fires, it's because we are at war and our government our government, our own government, our own military, our own law enforcement. They're not protecting you. They are actually attacking you. 
This was a good article posted in The Intercept, uh, February 26, 2015. Now, why do I go to The New York Times? Why do I go to The Intercept? intercept with this is because this is where the liberal progressives go. This is what they read so they know that the FBI is behind virtually every terrorist plot that they themselves thwarted and yet they listen to mainstream media over and over and over again. I was looking at some of the YouTube videos posted by people saying, thank God, thank God, nothing really bad happened in New York City. Suicide bomber blew himself up. I just remembered that I had my oven on and I just turned it off. But yes, I am unbelievably just, you know, unless Americans wake up, you will see all of this insanity more and more and more often. Yay! And what is, what's the solution for law enforcement to do? Well, more surveillance, more control. The FBI and major media outlets yesterday, this is back in 2015, trumpeted the agency's latest counterterrorism triumph the arrest of three Brooklyn men, ages 19 to 30, on charges of conspiring to travel to Syria to fight for ISIS. Well, none of the three men were in any condition to travel or support the Islamic State without the help of our glorious FBI. This has been going on. For so long. All right, let's let's. Uh, I'm just going to read these three paragraphs, and this is the very clear pattern. The known facts from this latest case seem to fit well within a now familiar familiar FBI pattern. And the latest case was back in 2015. So, the agency does not disrupt planned domestic terror attacks, but rather creates them, then publicly praises itself for stopping its own plots first. First, they target a Muslim, not due to any evidence of intent or capability to engage in terrorism, but rather for the radical political views he expresses. In most cases, the Muslim targeted by the FBI is a very young, late teens, early 20s, adrift, unemployed, loner, who has shown no signs of mastering basic life functions, let alone carrying out a serious terror attack and has no known involvement with actual terrorist groups. They then find another Muslim who is highly motivated to help disrupt a terror plot either because they're being paid substantial sums of money by the FBI or because, as appears to be the case here, here meaning the terrorist attack that was thwarted by the FBI back in 2015, well, they are charged with some unrelated crime and are desperate to please the FBI in exchange for leniency. The FBI then gives the informant a detailed attack plan and sometimes even the money and other instruments to carry it out. And the informant then shares all of that with the target. Typically, the informant also induces, lures, cajoles, and persuades the target to agree to carry out the FBI-designed plot. In some instances where the target refuses to go along, they have their informant offer huge cash inducements to the impoverished target. Once they finally get the target to agree, the FBI swoops in at the last minute, arrests the target, issues a press release praising themselves for disrupting a dangerous attack, which it conceived of, funded, and recruited 
the operatives for and the Department of Justice and federal judges send their target to prison for years or even decades where they are kept in special Gitmo-like units. Subservient U.S. courts uphold the charges by applying such a broad and permissive interpretation of entrapment that it could almost never be successfully invoked. Once again, we should all pause for a moment to thank the brave men and women of the FBI for saving us from their own terror plots. Now, the point I am making here is that for, with, with knowing that this is how our FBI operates, every, every event that takes place, every American should be questioning, questioning, like, let's see if I can get um, a clear picture of this guy. Yes, he was a cab driver bent on, he was bent on revenge. Yeah, he detonated a bomb that he was wearing, a suicide bomber, ISIS inspired. It doesn't look like it was a really strong bomb to me, considering that, well, it doesn't even appear to have, I don't know, um, cut him very deeply where you would see a lot of blood. He blew himself up. He's alive. He was brought into police custody immediately. Yay! We police, we FBI, we law enforcement, we love Americans and we just want to protect you. Now, what you are going to see is a stripping of more and more of your freedom, more surveillance, more control by law enforcement over ordinary Americans. This has been going on. It should be clear to Americans that something is not right but they love to believe authority figures. Links are below.